Welcome to Sunday Dinner. Tonight we have an incredibly special episode to share with everybody. Um, before we get to that, let me introduce you to my incredibly beautiful, talented, creative daughter, Layla. Layla, do you want to say hi? Hello. And tonight, Layla, what is it that we're making for everyone? Texas chili. Texas chili. This is a really incredible, rich recipe, full of spice, full of different layers of flavors that we really can't wait to share with you. Um, this is really a three-step process. The first thing we're going to do is make our homemade beef broth. And as you can see, this is what we kind of have out for tonight. We're actually going to make this the day before, let this cook for hours and hours, um, and then kind of store it overnight. The next thing we're going to do as a second step is rehydrate our own dehydrated peppers. And that's a great step. We're going to make a mole with those peppers. And again, it's about adding layers of flavors. That's going to be the theme of this entire recipe. And then the last step is really just going to be entire cooking the chili, letting it saute all day, and um, really come to this rich, rich, incredible recipe. So with that, we're going to get to sauteing um, our beef broth. I'm going to walk you through that step by step, and tomorrow we'll kind of rejoin and walk you through the rest of the recipe. So Re Layla, are you ready to help me um, make this beef broth? Yes. All right. Well, we're going to get everything ready and prepared, and we'll join you in a few minutes. Okay, before you go too much further, please go to our YouTube page, Sunday Dinner, subscribe, like, share, as well as go to our Facebook page and like our page as well. We're going to be trying to share as many videos as possible, and we want you all to help spread the word. Okay, so with that, the first step again is making the beef broth. And um, here, what you can see here today, what we had at our butcher were beef neck bones. Um, if you can, you can get oxtails, you can get leg bones, whatever you can get from your butcher. Right now, we had uh, neck bones. And with this, here's our staples for the beef broth, the mirepoix, your onions, carrots, and celery. In addition to that, we have leeks. I have around six or seven cloves of garlic. We have one shallot. We have some fresh thyme and fresh oregano, and we have some ghee in which we're gonna help saute these vegetables slowly. Okay, so for the first step here, we have our oven on around 425. We have our beef bones here, and this is where we're gonna go a little bit commando. Okay, Layla, I'm gonna spread some tomato paste all over the top of these. Okay, just a little bit on each one. There we go. We don't need a lot, just a little bit on each one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this tomato paste kind of roast into these bones and help create again layers of sauce, layers of flavor for our beef broth. Okay, Layla, with that, there we go. What I want you to do now is kind of roll up your sleeves and just kind of start spreading this over top. Nothing neat, just kind of spread it all over. Just get your hands all in it. There you go. It doesn't have to be neat. We're just trying to spread it and just gonna let this tomato paste caramelize over top of this meat as they're roasting. And it's good, it's gonna char a little bit, it's gonna add flavors, and we'll deglaze this pan before we add it back. Okay, all right, with that, now my hands are all nice and dirty. All right, we'll wash our hands again right after this, Layla. But now I'm gonna go ahead and take my towel here, get a little dirty, open this up. There you go, sweetie, don't worry. And put this right in our oven. We're gonna roast these right at 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to turn this back on. I turned it off very quickly. To 425. All right. And we're going to let that bake. I know I got a little messy there. We're going to let that bake now for around 45 minutes to an hour. And when I see that meat kind of nice and charred and the, kind of the blackness on top of the bones, we know they're about done. But in the interim, we're going to start and we're going to saute our vegetables. Here you go, sweetie. We're going to saute our vegetables as the next step. We're going to let that cook for about 20, 25 minutes before we saute our vegetables. All right, well, Layla, you ready? Let's let these, these bones cook, and uh, we'll join you in about 20 minutes. So the beef ribs have been going for about 25 minutes, and man, the smell. It smells ridiculously good. <laughs> it's, it's incredible in here. Anyways, we have our pot nice and hot, and we have what well, we have holy... We have the mirepoix here, our onions, our carrots, and our celery, all coarsely chopped. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to take literally a, almost a couple tablespoons of ghee here. There we go. And let that kind of slowly melt and kind of pan in here. You see the ghee melting here. It's just clarified butter. And Layla, if you go ahead and go ahead and add 
our mirror paw. Dump it all in. There you go. Keep going. All the way over. There you go, sweetheart. Good job. Got a couple out. No problem. All right. So we're just going to mix all this up. I'm going to put this on actually medium low. We can kind of make sure all this breaks up. And we're not looking to over caramelize here, but we're wanting to let the vegetables release a little bit of their flavor before we take our beef bones out. And as you can see here, we still have our herbs, we have our leeks, we have our garlic and our shallots still to add. And we'll do that here in just a couple minutes. But I'm gonna let this onion, celery, and carrot first start releasing little flavors before we do so. So we're gonna come back in about five minutes. We'll add some more vegetables and we'll see you when we return. All right. So we just added our shallots, our leeks, and garlic, and we're just gonna let those now all cook in for a few more minutes. And I just have this cooking on low now. Onion is slightly starting to caramelize. Now I have just a couple sprigs of both thyme and oregano, and I'm just gonna throw those right on top. Okay, here are just a couple more minutes. We're gonna take our beef bones out. They smell incredible. Then we're gonna add them to this mixture and add water. So give us just one second and we'll be right back. Okay, the smells of the kitchen are literally exploding with flavor. The vegetables, the herbs are now starting to give off all their essence. The beef rib literally is like putting me in a coma and I'm not even eating it yet. It smells incredible and I can't wait to share this with you. Wait till this looks like, guys. All right, oh man. Look at that beautiful, beautiful char. Oh man, these are caramelized, absolutely perfect. Okay, get all that here. Look at that. That is beautiful. All right. So now I'm literally just going to add these bones straight to our vegetable pot here. Get all the little char pieces in there. You kind of look at that. Oh, that tomato paste is nice. Seasoned in here. These bones are nice and roasted. It smells incredible. Oh, look at that. Incredible. That's going to give off some truly immense, immense flavor. Look at that. <laughs> And this is just for the stock. All right, a couple more bones here. All right. Again, you can eat all those little bits in there, sit there and play with it. But I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna add my water. Layla, we're gonna add the water until it's literally covering, oops, a little messy there, all the way to where it's covering all the way to the top of the bones, perfect, right there. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cook this again until almost starts boiling. All right, I'm just gonna mix this in here a little bit. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, we're gonna cook this until it gets to boiling. And then when it gets to boiling, I'm literally gonna turn this down to as low as it can get. We want the slowest simmer that we can afford. And we're gonna let this cook for literally four plus hours. In fact, I may let this go all the way overnight, cooking it as low as I could possibly go. Uh, from there, we're just really gonna strain everything off. And don't worry about the oil on the top. We can separate that throughout the process as it kind of bubbles up. And I'll kind of show you all that as we go, as well as in the end when we pour this off and we put this in the refrigerator to cool, that fat layer will kind of form on top and you can just kind of take it right off the top and that way it's not interfering. But this flavor here is going to be incredible. All the vegetables, all that nice charred meat, it's going to cook for at least four plus hours, and you're going to see how beautiful and rich it is. I uh, can't wait to keep sharing this with you, and join us for tomorrow's portion of Sunday dinner. I can't wait to share our Texas chili, but our phase one is pretty much done. We're going to let this cook pretty much all night. All right, Layla, you going to say goodnight? Goodnight. All right, can't wait to see you tomorrow.
Okay, for phase two of this recipe, we have our dried chilies, and this is really the flavor base for the entire recipe. And as you can see here, we were able to get these chilies in our local grocery store. And here we have around four pasilla peppers. We have four ancho peppers, five or six chili de arbols, four New Mexico pod peppers, and four guajillos. We also have a can of chipotles and adobos. These are smoked jalapenos and adobo sauce. We'll use two or three of these as well, as well as our beef broth that we made and let it cook all night long. In regards to the beef broth, if you don't have the time to do it the night before, you can skip that part. Just use your favorite beef broth that you can get in your store or chicken broth, you can absolutely substitute. But we love this beef broth, it does add a lot of flavor. So again, the next big layer of flavor that we're gonna start cooking here is our chili base. And what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna take these chilies and just start, I'm gonna stump them right here in this hot pan, which I've kind of already had heating, heating up, excuse me. I'm gonna just kind of make sure I can scatter them here on the ground. Did a couple of these, I'm gonna do this in a couple batches. All right, so I've already had this pan heating up. I'm gonna turn it back on, put it on a medium high heat. And I'm just gonna let these cook for about 30 seconds to a minute on each side. They quickly are gonna to toast, and this will really help bring the flavor of these out. And then after they're toasted for a couple, a minute or so on each side, I'm gonna put them in this hot water. I have this water on really, really low heat but it's nice and hot, it's gonna help the rehydrating process, which are gonna rehydrate these peppers for around 30 to 45 minutes until I see them really pliable. Okay, with that, I'm just gonna kinda of keep just barely moving these around the pot, and like I said, it's about a minute on each side, and that is it. And uh, already, after what, 30 seconds maybe, you can already start smelling them, really start releasing their beautiful smell and great flavor. Make sure to turn the chili to our balls, they will probably burn the fastest of all of them. Again, we're just wanting to lightly toast these. There you go, perfect, nice little char. Last little pasilla, it's good to turn over. And again, we're not looking to really cook these, but just kind of toast these out just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna keep doing this and I'll rejoin y'all in just a few minutes. So we have our second batch of peppers in here, our New Mexico pods as well as our wajillos. You can see these New Mexico pods will start actually puffing up a little bit. And you almost want to kind of continuously move these around. You don't want them too brown. You can already see they're starting to kind of, perfect, that one's ready. Okay, see, I'm just gonna dunk them in that water in there. These have been in here for, like I said, about almost a minute each side. These, these are ready, perfect. Again, you're not trying to overcook them, you're just trying to toast them just enough. Go ahead and turn the heat off here to bring out the flavors on all sides. And now we're gonna to start the rehydration, rehydrating process. Okay, one more chili R ball. Okay, now I'm gonna sit here, just kinda smush them down a little bit. As you can see, I have a plate here in my hand. And what I'm gonna do with this plate, is I'm gonna carefully put this down, try not to burn myself, just like that, all the way over the chilies. And they may try to get on the sides, it's fine. What that's gonna do is keep almost all of them down and under the water. I can sit here, I'm gonna a couple different times flip them for the next 30 to 45 minutes, making sure they're all hydrated. Um, after the hydration happens, we're gonna take them, we're gonna cut some of the stems off, as well as remove some of the seeds and finish making our mole. But this is gonna sit for now, call it 45 minutes until I see the peppers nice and rehydrated and we'll join you again. So our peppers now have been in the water for about 45 minutes rehydrating and now you can kind of see they're nice and soft and pliable and ready to start making our chili slurry mix or our mole. As you can see I've also got around three of the chipotle peppers already out and ready to add as well as the beef broth um, like I said. So the next step here is I'm going to take a few of these out and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna kind of squeeze them in here. We don't want that excess of that water. That water's gonna be really, really bitter and we don't want that in our slurry. So I'm just gonna kind of squeeze those. And as you can see, I'm just gonna kind of take the top out of here and I'm gonna cut them almost right in half. You can choose to keep the seeds or not keep the seeds. The more seeds you keep, the hotter this will be. The less seeds you keep, obviously will lower the heat here. 
I'm gonna keep some in and some out. I definitely want some heat in my chili. My family does like spicy. If your family likes less spicy, use less seeds. And you can see here, you don't have to be meticulous about it. I'm coming in here, I'm taking out most of the seeds. And um, with that, you're still gonna be plenty, plenty spicy. I'm gonna discard those tops. And again, really important as you pull, as you pull the chilies out of the bowl, squeeze them of their liquids. We don't want the bitter liquids in this dish. Okay, so again, I'm gonna keep some of the seeds, I'm gonna remove most of them. I'm gonna sit here and go through this entire process um, until I get all of these done and in this slurry mix, and then I'll rejoin you in a few minutes. Okay, so I finished deseeding all the rest of our rehydrated peppers. I have them now in my blender here, ready to go. And as you can see, I definitely have some seeds in there, but I've taken out the majority of them. And that seed density is gonna be what's gonna really control your spice. If you like it really spicy, don't take any seeds out. If you like it much, much more mild, try to be meticulous to take out as many seeds as you can. All right, so here I have our beef broth, like I mentioned before, I have about two cups. I'm not gonna use it all, the rest I'll use for my chili. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pour this in here. I'm gonna get this to where, I'm just gonna kind of spoon this around, make sure it's going all in there. Just towards almost right at the top. So I am gonna use close to this. That's about perfect, right at the top. I'm gonna to put this over to the side. And if I need to add more as I see this going, I will. I'm gonna just kind of slowly, this is gonna pop up, so be real careful. Start nice and slow. Increase the speed. Right at the right consistency. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest, now that I'm saying this, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this beef broth in there. This looks perfect. I'm gonna stir that in. Oh man, be really careful. This is extremely, extremely spicy still and will definitely burn your nostrils. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kind of slowly start that again. And look at that red color. When people think of Texas chili, a lot of people call it Texas red. This is really what it's made from, right here. So we hydrated chilies, chili con carne, chili with meat. I'm gonna let this go for almost a minute in total. Bring the speed up as I go. Now that it's basically done, I'm gonna slow it down. And boom. Okay. Come on in here and look at this. This is what Texas Red is really about. This is going to be the flavor base. Oh my gosh, it smells incredible. All of those peppers all mixed in together. Looks beautiful. Okay. All right. With this, we're going to put this aside. We're gonna to get to the next step is really cooking the entire chili, which we're gonna start with kind of smoking or slowly grilling the sirloins in which we're cooking today. You can use ground chuck. I'm gonna go into all the different ingredients to actually cook in the chili next, but this is the flavor base and this is what's gonna set our chili apart from most others that you'll ever have. All right, we'll get back to you here in just a few minutes. All right, welcome back everyone. And Layla, thanks for joining me again. And this is the last phase of the recipe, which is actually gonna be cooking the steaks as well as cooking the chili. This is gonna be about a two to three hour process now um, from start to finish once we get going. As you can see, I kind of have all of the ingredients here for this last phase. And I didn't mention before, but in the descriptions below, we will list the ingredients for all three phases that you'll need. Um, down below in the description. So just click below and you'll see all that. And we'll go through that step by step um, as we cook as well. So again, 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our steaks. We're going to put some salt and pepper on them. We're going to get them ready for this grill slash smoker. We're going to actually kind of do a little offset smoke on them. The key is not going to be here to overcook them, but just get a nice little brown on them on the outside. And then we're going to start coming back inside and we're going to start cooking all our vegetables, building that last flavor base for this incredible rich recipe. And as you can see, all this is going to go in it. And um, we're going to get back to you here in just one second and get going on the steaks. All right, Layla. Well, thank you for helping with the steaks here. As you can see, I have my Weber right around 400 degrees. Um, and I got some smoke on it here. Woo, nice. I got some pecan chips in here. Layla, hold that up. There you go, sweetheart. Pecan chips with the mesquite charcoal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this off to the side. I am not trying to direct grill these. I am trying to indirect, almost smoke these here. And I'm only going to do it for a few minutes on each side because we're going to cook this with the chili. But what I'm trying to do is getting a little, I'll take that from you. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm trying to get a little bit of smoke base on this and get a little bit of sear on the outside. So again, I'm going to probably do this two or three minutes on each side and just kind of watch how this goes. You see that smoke's going to permeate this meat and add a different level of flavor to our chili. It's going to be outstanding. So we're going to go ahead and grill these off and I'll join you back in the kitchen as soon as these are ready. I'm going to show you exactly how we want it. Okay, I just got back in. As you can see, we have all the vegetables chopped. We got the spices all proportioned out. We got our bacon cut. And most importantly here, you can see the sirloin. We absolutely did not overcook them. It's very, very rare still. We just got a little bit of smoke and a little bit of sear on the outside. And from that, now everything's gonna come together really, really quickly. All right, Layla, you ready to help me get this started? Yes. Okay, the first thing we did here is we got one 12 ounce package of bacon and we kind of cubed it up. And now we're going to sear this. We're going to actually brown that. Go ahead and just dump it all in. There you go. I'll get that for you. There you go, sweetheart. One more. Okay. We've got this in bite-sized chunks, and we're just going to brown this off and get it kind of almost crispy. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this grease, again, building layers of flavor throughout this entire process. We're going to use this grease, once this is brown, to then cook our jalapenos, cook our... Um, onion as well as our garlic in this grease. We'll probably add a little bit of clarified butter to that. But with this, we're gonna let this cook. This bacon's probably gonna take three or four minutes at least to kind of crisp up, maybe more. And it's gonna release all of its oils and that's what we're gonna use for our next step in our process, okay? All right, Layla, you don't wanna kind of over move that too much. You gotta let it sit for a little bit, move it around periodically. And um, we'll join everybody once this is nice and crisp. Okay, as you can see now, the bacon is nice and crisp. We have tons of oil now to use for the rest of our vegetables. I'm gonna just quickly take this bacon out and I'm gonna reserve it to the side as we cook everything else. Oh yeah. Again, layers of flavor. That is the theme of this recipe. Sorry, Layla, not trying to get in your face there. All right, we just wanna get them all out. Nice. And I think we have enough oil here. I don't think we need to add anything else. Next thing, Layla, we're going to add here is our onions and jalapenos. All right. I'm going to hand you those, sweetheart. You can just tell me you got them. Dump them right in. There you go. There you go. A little closer to the bowl. There you go. Okay. That's good enough. Thank you, sweetie. And then I'm going to just pour our jalapenos in there. Nice and hot. Okay. Put this bowl behind us. Okay. One of the things, Layla, that I always do is going to actually kind of help deglaze the pan a little bit on the bottom. Nice. It's going to soak up all that bacon grease. It looks really good. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. One thing that's really important, when we cook with onions and vegetables, we're going to actually put a little kosher salt. In this case, actually, we're using a little sea salt all over the onions. It's going to help the onions release a little bit of their moisture and sweetness into the recipe. All right, this is going to come together really, really quickly. We're going to sweat these down and let this kind of caramelize a little bit for four or five minutes until they're starting to become translucent. At that point in time, we're going to add our garlic and the rest of our vegetables, and then we're going to start adding our liquids and our beef and everything. It's going to come together really quick. It's going to be super yummy. It's going to cook all afternoon or at least for a couple more hours after this, and we're going to be ready to eat. So our onions have been cooking now for about four or five minutes. You can see they're starting to become translucent. Same thing for our jalapenos, starting to soften up a little bit. 
Okay, Layla, you can see we kind of started deglazing the pan for that bacon was adding flavor. You want to get all those bits. That's incredible. Layla, can you go ahead and add the garlic now? No, there you go. All of it. Pour it in. There you go. Okay, set that to the side. Okay, good job. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and put our oregano in there. There you go, sweetie. We got probably about a little over a teaspoon of oregano. You can use dried oregano. We use a little oregano out of our garden. It's fantastic. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and brown off the rest of these spices. Okay, so lay the first one next to you. That is paprika. You can get that one. Just go ahead and spread that in. There you go. Good job. That's good. No problem. Okay, the next one here, this is going to be ground. Um, that was going to be the Camino. No, no, that one. No, the first one. There you go, the ground cumin. Nice, you can see how the spices are starting to brown. Go ahead and put it in. There you go, perfect. Get the next one, and this is gonna be the ground coriander. There you go, try to spread it around a little bit more. Good job, sweetie. So this is gonna be brown sugar. It's gonna help bring a little bit of sweetness out. There you go, and I'll stir that around, it's okay. Okay, and then the next one is granulated garlic, or garlic powder. Okay, perfect, there you go. All right. What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to brown these seasonings now in and just let those seasonings kind of cook in. Cook with the garlic. Thank you, sweetheart. Good job. All right, here in just a second, I'm gonna add a pinch more salt. I'm gonna do a little black pepper. Okay. I'm not gonna add a ton of black pepper here, but like a little bit of fresh pepper. Pepper. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to pick this up, sweetheart. It's a little bit heavy. And this is going to be all our beef. Now we're going to start kind of adding everything back to the pot. All those beef juices all come in here. Perfect. It looks delicious. Oh, smells even better. Now just combine that really good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Again, this was right at like four and a half, four and a quarter pounds of beef. It was three big sirloin steaks. You could use ground chuck, you could use sirloin, ribeye, stew meat, whatever you want. But we like the big, thick chunks of steak, not ground beef. And that's how we kind of make ours. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding all our liquids here. I'm gonna go ahead and I have one 12 ounce can of beer. In this case, we use Dosa Keys. You can use an amber or a bock. It's probably more traditional to this dish. But we like using dosa key slobber, and that's what we use. All right, so now we're gonna add our beef broth. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna add most of this. And here's what's key here. So Jen, go ahead and pan in here. I'm trying to get this to where it's just liquidy and right on top of the beef. I don't want this too much, but this is, that's perfect. So that was right at around four cups, a little over four cups of beef broth that we added, okay? Now we're gonna add, this is, we got whole San Marzano tomatoes is what we did, but we hand crushed them. I don't like the to crush. I like all the different little pieces of tomato, all being different textures in this recipe. I'm gonna add that. Oh, and we can't forget this. This here is obviously our flavor base. This is our chili mole. That's really gonna give it this red, unique color, as well as the intense, intense flavors that this chili is gonna pack, okay? Awesome. All right, look at that. We're just gonna now combine this slowly. Let it all nice and combine. And we're gonna bring this up. We're on about a medium high heat. I'm gonna bring it up to where it's really at a nice simmer. And once it gets to a nice simmer, I'll turn down the heat a little bit. And it's a matter of cooking this now for two to three hours. You can even cook it slightly more until it starts reducing a little bit as well as um, the meat starts to become tender and you'll see that the meal start breaking apart. But now you can see why they call this Texas Red, okay? I still have some reserved salt. I'm gonna kind of taste as I go to make sure I'm satisfied with the salt content and have a couple other secret ingredients I'm gonna add towards the end here that you can probably see. One being a stick of cinnamon. I don't add that right off the bat. I'm gonna add this in about an hour as well as some Mexican hot chocolate that I'm gonna grate into the chili itself. And that'll be towards the end. But with that, we're gonna like let this slow cook. We're gonna bring this up, like I said, right to where it's boiling. Oh, not boiling, but just a nice rolling simmer. Turn it down and let it cook for another two to three hours. 
All right, Layla, smelling good? Really good. Awesome. All right, we'll talk to you all soon. So the chili has been cooking now for about an hour. And as you can see, it's a nice simmer, just a small boil. And we're gonna add now a few extra ingredients. So Layla, you have a, a cinnamon stick here. So if you just wanna drop that right in the middle. Next thing here, I microplaned some Mexican hot chocolate. This is probably one to two tablespoons. And I'm just gonna add uh, about that much. I'd say that's probably about a little over, a eh, little bit more, a little over a tablespoon. Then we're gonna add all of that bacon, the crispy bacon that we reserve. We're gonna throw that back in there for some additional taste and get that all stirred in. Nice. So now this is gonna cook for probably about two more hours and around three hours of total cooking time. We're gonna keep watching this. We're gonna watch the thickness as this goes. You can see it's already dropped a little bit as far as um, water volume. We're gonna keep watching this towards the end and we may add some moss to thicken it up even a little bit more, but we're just gonna keep watching it. We're gonna keep um, at this a nice simmer and cook it for a couple more hours. It smells and looks really delicious. Awesome. So the chili has now been cooking for actually a full four hours. I was estimating three hours. And just like I cook anything like a stew, I always look for the exact consistency and the tenderness of the beef that I'm looking for. We did not put any masa in this. This is not smell incredible. We did not put any masa in this. It thickened up incredibly. The beef is now really, really tender to the bite and ready to serve. And with that, Layla, I'm gonna go ahead and serve us a big old bowl of chili. I'm gonna to top it with some of our favorite toppings. All right, with this. And you can choose to top this with whatever you want. Mexican cheese, grated cheese, what we really like. This may be a little bit unusual to some, but I like one big dollop of sour cream right in the middle. It actually cuts some of the heat down. Put like a little bit of cilantro right on top of that. Wedge of lime, and then my favorite with it also, is just avocado. some avocado. And there we go, folks. That is an incredible bowl of Texas chili. Um, I really hope y'all all get to make this as a family. I know it takes a little while, but it's really well, well worth it. Incredibly flavor for meal. And I'm um, really glad to share it with you. So thank you for joining Sunday dinner. We look forward to sharing another recipe with you soon.